I see I got a golf ball and a uh, ping pong ball. I wonder, huh. I wonder if density affects the height of these balls and how they bounce. I'm wondering. I should, I should write a hypothesis. Huh, what is a hypothesis? I wish I, I wish I knew what a hypothesis was so I could write one. Wait a minute, whoa, whoa wait, wait, wait. Hypothesis writing, what perfect timing. All right, but before we talk about hypothesis writing, we gotta talk about the scientific method. There's nine steps to the scientific method. First one is observe, just like I did with the ping pong ball and the uh, golf ball. Second one is question, hmm, bounce height, density. Next is hypothesize. We're gonna get more into that later. Kind of wondering what you think is gonna happen and why. Then you design an experiment to test that hypothesis. Then you analyze the results you got from the experiment. You conclude, so did it, did it support or deny your hypothesis? You report your findings, and last, the ninth step is you iterate. So do you need to make any changes? What, like, what was the, pro you go back and sort of re-examine your process. All right, so what exactly is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is an educated guess, or it's a question that you can test. It has three main characteristics. The first is it explains behavior or action. It's got to be, it has to, got to be, has to be testable. Um, it's got to be answer a question. In this case, it is the relationship between the independent and dependent variable, the IV and the DV. All right, so when do you use, when do you use a hypothesis? It's following an observation or wonder, just like I was wondering about my ping pong ball and my golf ball. Um, after, after determining a problem. Now, Variables, let's get into this a little bit more. So you've got the independent variable, um, otherwise known as the IV abbreviation. The thing that you change in the experiment, this is the thing that you mess with. So in this case, it would be the density of the golf ball versus the density of the ping pong ball. So the dependent variable is the thing that, you cha that changes as a result of the change that you make in the independent variable. So the, the change that I made in the IV is, is gonna be the density. The thing that you measure, I decided, is gonna be the bounce height. All right, so the constants are the things that stay the same during the experiment. So it's going to be, for instance, same person, same person dropping the ball, um, same manufacturer of ball, same air pressure, things like that. All right, so variables in an experiment. Your hypothesis contains two variables. These are the independent and the dependent variable, as we just mentioned. So an experiment should only test one variable at a time. Everything else should be a constant, something that does not change. And the reason you want to only, only test one variable at a time is because if you have multiple variables, how do you know which change caused the effect? All right, see if we can identify the variables in these observations. So I observed people who exercise are more flexible. What would your independent variable be? And what would your, what would your dependent variable be? And I wonder how sunlight affects tree growth. Again, what's your independent and what's your dependent variable? Again, your independent variable is the one that you change, that you can manipulate, and the dependent variable is the one that you measure that changes as an effect of you changing the IV. Last but not least, if I have wet feet, am I going to get foot fungus? Your independent and your dependent variable. All right, so let's try, our, let's try a little practice with constants. Name as many constants as you can for this observation. So what effect, what effect does sunlight have on tree growth? Maybe a constant could be the type of tree, right? Because it's, it's got to stay the same throughout the experiment. Um, maybe it could be the altitude. Maybe it could be um, time of day. So try and, figure out, try and figure out as many constants as you can for this observation. All right, so your hypothesis format. Um, in this class, we're gonna use two formats, um, two specific formats. That all, so all of, your, the, all of your hypotheses need to be written in, the, in one of these two formats. And they're slightly different, just, so just choose the one that's gonna work best for your situation. Dun, da, da, da. So the first one is, if your independent variable is related to your dependent variable, then a change in your independent variable will cause a change in your dependent variable because. Now the because is the, is the most important part of a hypothesis statement. Otherwise, it's just an if-then statement. 
And then your second format is going to be a change in the independent variable. We'll cause a change in the dependent variable because. And again, be sure and answer that because. And that is hypothesis writing. So if you'll excuse me, I've sort of got the, the makings of a great experiment here. I'm going to go, um, now that I know how to finally, I'm going to go write a hypothesis. We'll see you in class.